Michael Jackson was known as the King of Pop and will go down in history as a pop genius. The news of his death on the 25th of June 2009 spread around the world like wildfire. Born on the 29th of August, 1958, in Gary, Indiana. Michael Joseph Jackson grew up in a large family with nine brothers and sisters. However, his childhood was not a happy one. He was deprived of normal friends as his father worked all of the children hard for their future careers. Michael started singing with the band at the age of five. Under the heavy hand of their father, the children practiced long and hard. In his book, Moonwalk, Michael tells of how they were teased by the neighborhood children because of their constant practicing instead of playing with them. Michael Jackson once said, our house in Gary was tiny. It only had three rooms, but at that time, it felt a lot larger. When you are young, the whole world seems so big that even a small room feels four times as big as it really is. On returning to Gary years later, we were all surprised at how small the house was. It really wasn't much bigger than a garage. I remembered it as much bigger, but it was possible to walk from the front door to the back door in five steps. It really wasn't much bigger than a garage, but we thought it was great when we lived there. As a child, you see things from a different perspective. At the end of the 60s, the Jackson Five got a recording contract with Motown Records, and the five brothers moved to California with their father. At first, they lived temporarily with Dinah Ross, and also at the home of Motown boss, Barry Gordy Jr. Joseph Jackson's parenting was very disciplined. It has also been said that he sometimes did not withhold from hitting the boys.
whereas their mother Catherine cared lovingly for them, but in her distress found sanctuary with the Jehovah's Witnesses. Ich liebe es. Du musst dieses Leben lieben, um so lange dabei zu bleiben. Ansonsten wirst du verrückt. Wirklich. Wir reisen um die Welt, machen Platten. Wir haben einfach mega Spaß. These Super 8 film excerpts are from around 1972, when the family lived in California. They lived in the middle of all the Motown stars. Some say that it was a dream come true for the boys after their poor start in Gary, that they now lived a life of luxury in sunny California. At last they could enjoy the good life. Of course, they also had bad times when the band did not do as well as their father would have liked. Their first single in 1969 became a number one hit. In the tours that followed, they simply went from one hotel to another. The success also had its dark side. Soon it was impossible for them to be out in public without bodyguards. Everywhere they appeared, the fans crowded the streets. Because of the fans, they were no longer able to attend a normal school. I need an ambulance as soon as possible, sir. Okay, sir. What's your address? Los Angeles, California, 90077. You said Carrollwood? Yes. Carrollwood Drive, yes. Yes. Okay, sir. What's the phone number you're calling from? Hey, sir. sir. And what's the problem exactly what happened? Uh, sir, I have a, we have a, a gentleman here that needs help, and he's not breathing yet. He's not breathing, and we need to. We're trying to pump him, but he's not. He's okay. Not breathing, sir. Okay. How old is he? He's uh, 50 years old, sir. 50, okay. He's unconscious, he's not breathing? Yes, he's not breathing, sir. Okay, and he's not conscious either? He's not no, breathing. he's not conscious, sir. Okay. All right, do you have him? Is he on the floor? Where's he at right now? He's on the bed, sir. He's on the bed. Okay, let's get him on the floor. Okay. Okay, let's get him down to the floor. I'm going to help you with CPR right now, okay? We need him. We need yes, we're already on our way there. We're on our way. I'm going to do as Thank much you, I can to help you over the phone. We're already on our way. Did anybody see him? Yes, we have a personal doctor here with him, sir. Oh, you have but, uh, a doctor there? Yes, but he's not responding to anything. To No, no, he's not responding to CPR or anything, sir. Oh, okay. Well, we're on our way there. If your guys are doing CPR and you're instructed by a doctor, he has a higher authority than me. And he's Thank there you. on scene. Okay. Um, was, did anybody witness what happened? Uh, no, just the doctor, sir. The doctor's been the only one here. Okay, so did the doctor see what happened? Uh, um, doctor, did you see what happened, sir? And, sir, you just, uh, um, if you can please. Uh, oh, yeah, we're on our way. We're on our way. I'm just, I'm just passing these questions on to my uh, paramedics while they're on the way there, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, he's pumping, he's pumping his chest, but he's not responding to anything, sir. Please. Okay. Okay. We're on our okay. way. We'll, we're, we're less than a mile away. We'll be there shortly. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay, sir. Call us back if you need any help. Thank you. Yes, sir. <laughs> At 2.26 p.m. in the Ronald Reagan UCLA Medical Center in Los Angeles, Michael Jackson's struggle for life came to an end. After long attempts to resuscitate him, Michael Jackson was declared dead. Later, a paramedic said that Michael looked like an old man. 
Following his death, the Los Angeles police discovered large amounts of medication, which included propofol and several prescriptions that had been written out for him under a pseudonym. This led to the investigation of at least three doctors that were believed to have written prescriptions for him. According to his dietitian, Cherilyn Lee, Michael suffered from sleeplessness. During the autopsy, the medical examiner found tablets in his stomach. On the 7th of July 2009 at 10 a.m. in the Staples Center in Los Angeles, the official memorial ceremony began. It was attended by several television companies, approximately 2,000 reporters, almost 17,500 fans and 500 personalities. Michael's golden coffin was laid in state upon the stage. Tributes were given by the family, a gospel choir, and many others in words and music. Michael Jackson lived in the Neverland Ranch in the Santa Ynez Valley in California. Originally called Sycamore Valley Ranch, the $28 million estate was renamed Neverland, the home of Peter Pan, and in the style of Elvis's home, Graceland. The ranch lies about 10 minutes away from the town of Los Olivos and 13 kilometers north of the town of Santa Ynez. The area's main income is from wine. In 1988, after buying the ranch, Michael moved out of his parents' house, Havenhurst, in Encino, California. The Neverland Ranch covers an area of 11 square kilometers. The ranch also contains its own amusement park with several attractions, such as a zoo, a cinema, and a museum. When the ranch is shown on TV, it is mostly the train station, very much in the style of Disneyland, but it is not the actual house where Michael lived. It was quite often that Michael invited sick or socially deprived children to his ranch, so that they could have an enjoyable time in his amusement park. In 
In 2005, after being found not guilty of child abuse, Michael Jackson left his home in Los Olivos and moved to Bahrain with his three children. Rumours about selling the house were always rejected by his managers. The Neverland Ranch was closed until further notice. Since the end of his trial, Michael never felt at home there anymore. It was rumoured that Brad Pitt wanted to buy Neverland, but it was announced by Raymond Bain in a press release from the 9th of November 2007 that it was not for sale and would not be given over to any other person. To this day, the Neverland Ranch remains closed, the workers redundant. nicht mit seiner Hautfarbe übertreiben. Und ich denke, äh, von seiner Hautfarbe, der hat wirklich die schwarze Bevölkerung ziemlich erniedrigt, sagen wir mal so. Weil äh, der kommt davor, das ist ein Mann, ein Mensch, der hat sich nicht gemocht. Und in der Bibel sagt man, äh, liebt deine Nächste wie dich selbst. Ne? Und er hat sich nicht selbst gemocht. Dadurch hat die Schwarzen ihn auch nicht am Ende, am Ende nicht gemocht. Die haben nur bloß seine Art und Weise, wie er getanzt hat und seine Musik. Aber dass er seine Haut geändert hat, der wurde am Ende gar nicht mehr gemocht. Aber ich würde sagen, der Michael Jackson ist einfach eine Geschichte gewesen in unserem in unserer Leben. Und der, der wird auch eine Geschichte bleiben. Ne? Ich würde schon sagen, dass er auch nach seinen ersten Operationen sehr attraktiv aussah. Also jetzt, ähm, wenn ich, ich habe Film, äh, also den Filmmaterial aus den 90ern ges gesehen, wo, mit den langen Haaren und so. Ich fand, da sah er noch gut aus, nur äh, nach der Zeit wurde es dann immer übertriebener mit den Operationen, was, was ich schade fand. Ja. Ich weiß nicht, ich denke, ähm, er hatte ja eine er hatte einen besonderen Grund für seine Operation. Er wollte ja jetzt nicht, dass er einer Rasse angehört. Ob, da war ja ein Mischling sozusagen vom Aussehen aus schwarz, weiß oder asiatisch. Und das, ich finde, das hat man eigentlich gut gesehen. Man muss eine ganze Ausstrahlung hat man nicht gefallen, sagen wir mal, die viele Operationen, wo er durchgemacht hat und dann, was man alles immer wieder gehört hat, die viele Medikamente und alles miteinander. Und dann auch, äh, sagen wir mal, die Prozessverhandlungen da mit den Kindern missbraucht und alles. Gell? Das hat mir dann nicht so gefallen. At the end of the 70s and the beginning of the 80s, Michael had his first cosmetic operation. Further operations followed, especially on his nose. In an interview with Oprah Winfrey in 1993, he talked about having two operations on his nose and one on his chin. He also explained that for medical reasons, he needed operations on his head. During the filming of an advert for Pepsi in 1984, he suffered severe burns to his head. 
In the autopsy, they found a bald patch on his head, which was covered with a wig. The media speculated that he also had his skin whitened. This was cleared up in a television interview in which Michael explained that he suffered from the illness vitiligo. He had been undergoing treatment from his dermatologist Arnold Klein for over 25 years for acne and the chronic disease systematic lupus erythematosus. I will ask. Mm -hmm. The president has talked a lot about his love of music. He's mm -hmm. posted Stevie Wonder here. Oh, he, uh, he's talked a great deal about what's on his iPod, the Rolling Stone magazine. Mm -hmm. What was his reaction to the death of Michael Jackson? Um, I talked to him about it this morning. Um, look, I, he said to me that obviously um, Michael Jackson was uh, a spectacular performer. Uh, a music icon. Um, I think everybody remembers hearing his songs, uh, watching uh, watching him moonwalk on television uh, during Motown's 25th anniversary. Um, uh, I think, but the president also said, you know, look, he had a uh, aspects of his life were sad and tragic. Uh, his condolences went out to uh, the Jackson family uh, and to fans that mourned his loss. Why not written a statement then? Because I just said it. And you say he sent condolences to the family. Did he call the family person? <coughs> not that I know of. My question, but you didn't see it. Um, well, we're, just, we're done, right? Yeah, yeah. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> you guys really didn't have a bunch of climate change questions um, either. Yeah. That was the only. Uh, I noticed um, you guys were a bit shy when the uh, when the when the when the president was standing up there uh, earlier today. We were shy. Another question. I. Uh, Should we have shouted? Was he waiting? I I, I could have arranged it through a third party. Nice. Oh. oh. <laughs> oh I'm sorry, go ahead. I, 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 <laughs> I did think about shouting, but I already did that once this week. Wahrheit, wobei ich denke, dass die Amerikaner in Sachen Moral und so ja doch sehr übertrieben vielleicht reagieren. Also irgendwie haben die ja so eine ganz strenge Moral, denke ich mir jedenfalls so. Im Gegensatz zu den Knarren, wo jeder mit sich führen kann. Aber was Alkohol betrifft, sind sie ja ziemlich streng hinterher und mit Sex eben auch. Und ob das da nicht Geldmacherei war von den Eltern der Kinder, ob die da den abzocken wollten, den Michael Jackson, oder ob etwas dran ist, ich weiß es nicht. Vielleicht war er nur ein ganz harmloser, treuherziger Typ, kann ja sein, vielleicht auch nicht. Also nichts dazu. Ich habe damals diese Prozesse nicht wirklich verfolgt. Ähm, er ist ja auch, soweit ich weiß, freigesprochen worden. Und ich muss auch sagen, ich denke halt immer, wenn jemand ähm, wegen so etwas angeklagt wird, dann äh, hat meine Erfahrung gezeigt, dass auch meistens äh, 
ein bisschen was dran ist. Und, ähm, ja. Aber näher habe ich mich da auch nicht mit beschäftigt. Gentlemen, the President of the United States, Mrs. Reagan, and Mr. Michael Jackson. In the following excerpt, we see Michael Jackson together with the President of that time, Ronald Reagan, talking about the problems involved in drink driving. Michael received an award for the example he set young people. Well, isn't this a thriller? <laughs> I'm delighted to see all of you here today. We haven't seen this many people since we left China. And just think, you all came to see me. No, I know why you're here, and with good reason. To see one of the most talented, most popular, and most exciting superstars in the music world today, Michael Jackson. Michael, welcome to the White House. I hope you'll forgive me, but we have quite a few young folks in the White House who all wanted me to give you the same message. They said to tell Michael, please give some TLC to the PYTs. <laughs> I know that sounds a little off the wall, but you know what I mean. And Michael, I have another message from our fans in the Washington, D.C. area. They said, we want you back. So when you begin your greatly awaited cross-country tour, will you please be sure to stop off here in the nation's capital? Well, down to business. We're gathered here to mark the progress of a shared endeavor and to commit ourselves to an even greater national effort, as Elizabeth told you. On April 14th of 1982, I created a pre presidential commission on drunk driving. And since that date, real progress has been made. States have passed tougher laws, arrests and enforcement have been stepped up, and citizens across our country are taking a stronger stand against the tragedies caused by drinking and driving. Another milestone resulted in the commission's work the creation of a national public service campaign to make more Americans aware of solutions to this national problem. Our campaign will marshal the power of the media with the help, as you've been told, of the Advertising Council, our private sector initiatives office, and the Department of Transportation under the strong leadership of Secretary Elizabeth Dole. This private sector government partnership brings a message to young people that will touch many lives and change them for the better. Today, we recognize all these fine efforts of voluntarism by the Commission members as well as those of the Ad Council, helping one another for the good of this country and its citizens and without concern for reward or payment. This is the heart of America, strong, good, and true. I want to recognize another volunteer effort made for the good of our country, especially our nation's youth, and it is as you've been told, none other than Michael Jackson's effort. At this stage of his career, when it would seem he's achieved everything a musical performer could hope for, 
Michael Jackson is taking time to help lead the fight against alcohol and drug abuse. Michael, you've made it possible for us to warn millions of young Americans about the dangers of drinking and driving. You've done this with your music, you've provided to the public service messages as well as through your own personal example. And thanks to your help, Michael, young people from virtually every family in America will hear these messages on television and radio. And they will hear them at one of the most critical times of the year when graduations and vacations are fast approaching. Thanks to your help, lives will be saved and no one can put a dollar value on the precious life of one boy or girl. Michael Jackson is proof of what a person can accomplish through a lifestyle free of alcohol or drug abuse. People young and old respect that. And if Americans follow his example, then we can face up to the problem of drinking and driving. And we can, in Michael's words, beat it. Nancy spends a great deal of her time with young people talking about the problems of drug and alcohol abuse. So I speak for both of us when I say thank you, Michael, for the example that you're giving to millions of young Americans who look up to you. And let me just say, as one who spent a certain part of his life in the entertainment business, what Michael Jackson has achieved is a tribute to 20 years of hard work, energy, tireless dedication, and a wealth of talent that keeps on growing. Your success is an American dream come true. And now, if you'd permit me, I would like to present you with this award. And I would like to read what it says to Michael Jackson, with appreciation for the outstanding example you have set for the youth of America and the world. Your historic record-breaking achievements and your preeminence in popular music are a tribute to your creativity, dedication, and great ability. The generous contribution of your time and talent to the national campaign against teenage drunk driving will help millions of young Americans learn that drinking and driving can kill a friendship. I'm very, very honored. Thank you very much, Mr. President <laughs> and Mrs. Reagan. time of my life here. I've had so much fun. I hate to leave, but I'm definitely looking for a, a home here, Dubai, because I would love to spend uh, the rest of my life here. And we're definitely coming in January, and this is a wonderful, lovely year, and I love Nelson and Nelson very much. And thank you for all your hospitality and all your love. Thank you very much. Michael Jackson and Lori Gallant with a page of
Nun, die Sache mit Michael Jackson war an sich sehr kompliziert. Man wollte ja seine Musik im Osten nicht haben. Als Person hatte niemand etwas gegen den Künstler. The Ministry for State Security in the GDR, in short, the Stasi, the Secret Service of East Germany, also investigated political offenses. It was founded on the 8th of February, 1950. Viel konnte man auch nicht ermitteln. Es gab ein Kamerateam, das wohl von Sat1 war. Jedenfalls erkannte man das anhand des Kameraaufklebers Sat1. Mit Bestimmtheit kann man es aber nicht sagen. Vielleicht war es auch eine Nachrichtenagentur nur im Auftrag des Privatsenders. Es gab damals viel Unsinn. The Stasi also kept a close eye on the King of Pop, as he once gave a concert close to the Berlin Wall on the 19th of June 1988. Die haben den Star gefilmt. Es war eine große Menge Menschen vor Ort. Man befürchtete Proteste von Jugendlichen gegen die Regierung der DDR. Das sollte verhindert werden. Und es gab da verschiedene Ansätze, was man dagegen tun würde. This Später was a thorn wusste in jeder, the eye for dass es nur ein Doppelgänger war. Could it be that he was an enemy of the state? Did he have coded messages in his music? East Germany saw him as a threat and with him the risk of protests. On a card file index of the Stasi, Michael's name and date of birth and the fact that the East German record company Amiga that had produced Thriller had been written on it. The Stasi feared that there would be protests from the youth of East Germany who wanted to hear the concert Michael was to give in West Berlin at the Brandenburg Gate on the 19th of June 1988. Even a country concert had been planned that was to be shown on a screen with time shift. Just in case there were any anti-communist remarks that could be filled in with video material. This plan, however, never came into effect. Years later, Michael spoke again about his mother and father. I now have the best relationship with my father as never before. I think that time and age has made him into a nicer person. He now asks me, how are you? Do you eat enough? That's all I wanted to know. Not, have you signed the contract? All he wants to know is if I am fine. I think that's nice. And my mum, she's a real angel. Michael Jackson was a fragile man, perhaps not accepted from the world as he would have liked, but Michael loved his family and his fans. He may have died, but his music never will.